Hey guys, today I'm going to talk to you about scene two of A Streetcar Named Desire. Um, I will be referring to my book, um, as hopefully you guys are too, on your online document. So bear with me as I kind of look back and forth from my notes. Um, so, you know, as we discussed previously, we were talking, the last time we left off was when um, Blanche was mentioning something about her lost husband. Okay, so that was the end of scene one. Um, now we are currently in scene two. And some of the major things that I need to talk to you about would be starting on page 25, okay? Um, when you look on page 25, there are several instances uh, that allow us to believe that Stanley is this sort of macho um, man who, who runs the house and the women are supposed to be listening to him and doing what he wants. A couple places where we see this is where um, Stella jumps up to kiss Stanley on page 25 and he accepts it with lordly composure. Um, so it's almost like it was his right to be kissed in this, uh, in this way. Um, another thing that allows us to believe that Stanley's kind of the man of the house is when he asks Stella about his dinner. So he believes that she's got to be the one to prepare it and serve it to him. Um, and when she is not doing so, or not really doing so on that page, um, you can kind of tell he's sarcastic about it. Um, so anyway, that was a, another thing that I want to talk to you about on that particular page. Um, so he runs things. That's what you guys need to remember. If you go ahead and you go on to page 27, you'll see that, um, you know, Stella is very aware that her sister Blanche is the kind of person that's insecure and does need um, to be told that she looks great and everything like that to sort of boost her self-esteem. Because when she's talking to Stella, St uh, Stanley um, privately, she tells him to admire Blanche's dress, tell her she's looking great. You know, that's something that's important to Blanche is what it says on page 27. It's her weakness, according to Stella. Um, so yes, so like I said, she's aware of her sister's insecurities. You know, it shows us that um, appearance is very important to Blanche. You know, she needs everything to look good, even if it may not be good on the inside. All right, so that's something um, significant to note there, okay? Um, we can also see on page 27 that Stanley wishes to bring up um, some of the issues related to the plantation Belle Reve because he doesn't trust uh, Blanche and he believes that she's trying to swindle her own sister. Um, if you look on the bottom of page 28, he kind of brings up this um, argument that, you know, according to the Napoleonic Code, whatever is uh, his wife's is his and vice versa. Um, and he says, well, you know, if, if Blanche is swindling you, she's swindling me. So I want to know what exactly she's swindling, swindling me on. Okay. Um, so that was something I wanted to bring up to you on page 28. If you go on to page 29, um, you know, he, he doesn't like being swindled. He says, I don't, uh, at the very top, I don't like this. He doesn't trust her. He believes that she took the money probably from the plantation um, and then used it to buy herself these nice things that he sees and, you know, sticking out of her trunk or that, that she's wearing, okay? Um, you know, he brings up a pretty important point. He says, you know, if she didn't get it from th that, where else is she getting it? Um, you know, she's a teacher. She doesn't make a lot of money. I mean, even I know that. Uh, so how is she able to afford all the things that she currently has in her trunk? Um, you know, going further on page tw on page 30, he brings up the fact that she's got this tiara um, with diamonds in it, a crown for an empress. Um, I think he's kind of making fun of the fact that Blanche thinks she's really something. Um, you know, it is interesting that a grown woman like Blanche would have a tiara uh, when she's not exactly royalty. Um, or why would she be packing this thing around when it's not something you would wear in a you know day-to-day -day situation? Um, so maybe that is what Blanche thinks that she is, that she is above everyone else, that she is someone that's fit to be to be royalty, okay? Um, my guess is that Blanche wants to put up that illusion of grandeur um, and, uh, you know, so that's that's something we will probably talk more about at a later time. I did want to bring up that, that moth comparison. You know how we said that moths, you know, are not really, like it's not really a, a compliment to be compared to a moth. Um, we know that moths are attracted to artificial light. Um, perhaps that is, you know, Blanche, um, because she's attracted to things that look like they're real and they're really not, you know, according to him, it's this tiara, you know, it's, it, he says it's made out of diamonds when really it's made out of rhinestones. Okay. Um, so 
the the tiara is sort of fake like Blanche is. All right, so um, moving forward, we're on page 31 right now, guys. Um, another thing that sort of reflects Stanley's dominance in the relationship between he and Stella is when he, uh, when Stella tells him to come out and talk to her while Blanche is getting dressed, and he says, since when do you give me orders? Um, so, you know, he's not one to be told what to do. He's the one that tells people what to do, okay? Um, there will be more of those references or more examples of this at a later time. Um, I also want to talk to you a little bit more about color symbolism. Um, I said that that will be pretty important with Blanche throughout the course of the play. If you look on page 31, when uh, Blanche comes out after getting dressed, notice that she's wearing a red satin robe, okay? Um, a robe is something obviously you wear uh, within the house. It's probably more of an intimate sort of item of clothing. Um, the color of the robe is very very significant here because it is red now i don't know if you remember anything about you know the color red um but red sort of reflects passion sin desire okay um red roses you know they it, you give them to someone that you care for that you want to uh you know i don't know display those feelings so anyway uh so she's wearing this red robe so to me it seems like she's trying to um, maybe seduce somebody or maybe uh, look seductive, okay? So that's what I, I see on page 31. Um, and she even is a little flirtatious with Stanley here. Look at uh, underneath the description of the red satin robe. She says, you know, hello, Stanley, here I am, all freshly bathed and scented and feeling like a brand new human being. You know, here I am looking a lot better than when I came in. So um, I don't know, I just feel like she was a little flirtatious there. Um, I don't know how you would feel about that if you were in Stella's position seeing Blanche, you know, be the way she is with your husband or her husband. Um, okay, so I'm going to move a little bit forward here, uh, a couple pages. So page 33, we also see more of Blanche being seductive towards Stanley when she's asking him to help her um, with clothing you know, with the buttoning up things. Um, and, you know, obviously with Stanley and his fingers, he had a hard time doing that. And she's being a little flirtatious when, with him when she says, oh, you men, your big clubsy fingers, you know, oh, can I have a drag of your cigarette? Um, you know, so they're sharing something like, I don't know if it's kind of gross, but you know, cigarette, you swap and spit a little bit when you're sharing the cigarette. So anyway, um, I think that I think that she was being a little flirtatious here. Um, another thing I want to point out when she kind of says, oh, you men with your big clumsy fingers, she tries to undermine Stanley by making him feel helpless in this situation. This isn't the only time that she's going to do that. We'll see that in the pages uh, coming up. Okay. Um, looking further down, we have Blanche also continuing to fish for compliments on page 33. You know, she says, oh, and, um, you know, my youth, I excited some admiration, but look at me now. Kind of like she's fallen from that sort of uh, appearance. And I think she's waiting for Stanley to step in and be like, oh, no, honey, you look great. Like, you're, you look fabulous. Um, but, uh, you know. I guess if you look on page 34, she even says she was fishing for a compliment there. Uh, so Stanley, as you can see on page 34, is not really filing for that stuff. He says, I'm not really, a, I don't really go in for that stuff. Like, I don't really compliment um, or just give out random compliments to people about their looks. Okay. Um, so anyway, you know, he's just that person. She's not going to pull a fast one on him. Um, looking further down on page 34, you know, he reinforces that by saying that men, sometimes men are taken in by this Hollywood look and this glamour and, you know, looking basically like Blanche looks, um, but that's really not his thing. So again, just reinforcing that he's not falling or believing for, believing Blanche's crap. Um, if you go on page 35, you know, Blanche sort of talks to Stanley about how she perceives him. If you see here, um, you know, Blanche says on page 35 that you're simple and straightforward and honest, a little bit on the primitive side. Um, you know, if, when you're reading this, I don't know if you thought this way, but I certainly thought that it wasn't necessarily a compliment there either. Maybe the most complimentary thing that she had said was that he's straightforward and honest. Um, you know, I could say that's a positive thing, but, but being simple, um, when you say someone is a simple person, sometimes that means that they're not exactly the most intelligent. So I, 
I would take it that way, um, especially back in those days when they called someone simple. Um, anyway, she also even said that he's on the primitive side. So, you know, kind of like how we talked about in scene one where um, he just the, throws the package of meat up to Stella and says, meat, you know, and he's kind of like a caveman and sort of, you know, the provider of the family. I think that Blanche, you know, gets that vibe about him as well and that's why she says that he's he's primitive and I, I do think that that's still probably not really a positive thing um another thing that's kind of interesting and this is continuing her sort of flirtation uh she says you know to interest a woman you would have or sorry for a woman to interest somebody like Stanley the woman would have to lay all her cards on the table um, this is a euphemism. So a euphemism is sort of a nice way of saying something that maybe isn't so nice. And in, in this case, it, that's, that's true. You know, she's actually referencing um, a sexual relationship because she says if, if someone wanted to interest you, they basically would have to sleep with you, okay? Or engage in, in those types of behaviors. Uh, that's more of Stanley's thing because again, he's, he's primitive. Um, you know, it's beer, it's women, it's, you know, control, power, you know, that's what she's thinking. Um, but further down, you know, Stanley seems almost a little aggressive toward Blanche within their conversation um, because he says, you know, now let's cut the rebop. Um, if I had to translate that into maybe today's language, I would say, you know, let's cut the crap. You know, let's stop beating around the bush. Let's actually talk straight to each other about what we really want to say. Um, so, you know, it's just, it's again, he's, it's really reflecting that Stanley is not wanting to trust Blanche all that much. You know, he's seeing through all the little conversational tidbits, um, and is waiting for her to get to the real point. Um, further on the page 36, we have more of Blanche's flirtations with Stanley. She's spraying him with the perfume bottle and, you know, um, just trying to mess around with him and, kind of poke the bear, if you will, and, you know, he bites. So he, he grabs the perfume, he slams it down on the dresser. Again, another aggressive act on Stanley's part. And, you know, Blanche doesn't seem to be too afraid about that because she throws her head back and she laughs. Um, and, you know, Stanley said, he, he brings up some things. He said, if I didn't know that you were my wife's sister, I'd get some ideas about you, meaning that she's sort of a sketchy, or he believes that she's a sketchy individual, um, that she has some underlying intentions and they're not very good. Um, you know, and even tells her to stop playing dumb, to stop pretending to be innocent. So there's that artificiality where, she, you know, she's something that she, she pretends to be something that she's really not. Okay. Um, and even Blanche admits that she does fib on page 37. She goes, I know I fib a good deal. Uh, but after all, after all, a woman's charm is 50% illusion. That couldn't be, uh, you know, closer to the truth for her. You know, Blanche would know because <laughs> she is pretty artificial and, and puts up this illusion. Um, okay, so anyway, um, going further down, you know, Stanley wants to know what's going on in her trunk, and, you know, she says everything she owns is in the trunk, and I thought that, you know, the fact that Stanley crosses over to that actual trunk and starts roughly pulling out all these things and tossing them out of her, out of her compartments, um, kind of shows they sort of violating, um, her in a way. It's, it's violating her privacy, um, there are a lot of things in there that probably are more intimate in nature, you know, think about it. She's probably got undergarments in there. She's got, um, you know, paper. She's got letters, if you look on bottom of 37, that, that were between she and someone she cared for. So, yeah, so there is that invasion and, and sort of aggression coming from Stanley here. And this is, I believe, foreshadowing um, more aggression that will come from him, okay? Okay. Um, we also have underneath that, that scene direction after the rifling through the trunk that Blanche calls him a little boy. And there again is that undermining, it's a little dig at Stanley. Um, so, you you know, she's, she's kind of clawing back at him. Um, you know, we can't imagine or we could probably predict that, you know, these two uh, characters are not going to be um, friendly or really um, kind of reconcile some differences. I think that they're going to fight. Um, more in, in the scenes that come. So anyway, um, another thing, you know, Stanley snatches up letters. She doesn't want him to look at them. Um, so again, more invasion of that privacy. Okay. Um, going forward, you know, the next couple pages really just simply discuss um, some of the legal letters dealing with Belle Reeve, the plantation that she was talking about earlier on. Um, 
and you know nothing too significant there. Um, however, if you look on the bottom of page 39 and then top of page 40, we find out some pretty important information regarding Stella and Stanley. Um, he tells Blanche, and not Stella, Stella's not telling Blanche this, Stanley is, that they're about to have a baby. Okay, so that's a, that's a pretty important thing to keep a hold of for later on. Um, when Blanche does meet up with Stella after her conversation with Stanley, uh, she sort of plays it off like it was nothing too big. Like they thrashed it out. She kind of, she makes she makes it out to be lighter than it really was. Um, and she just said, oh, I thought I thought I handled it nicely. I laughed and treated it all as a joke. Um, but did she though? I, you know, I don't think so. Um, and you probably don't think so either. So again, there's that saying something that's really not what she feels putting up this illusion, I would, I would think. Um, so anyway, that's pretty much all that I needed to talk to you about in uh, scene two. Hopefully that helps you out. And if you have any questions, just be sure to send me an email or, um, or whatever you can do, and I will get back to you about it. Okay. So until then, I'll see you later.